Okay. Hello, I'm Chase, and I will be talking about the GarageBand Live Loops in the new iOS GarageBand. So, for starters, you want to start by creating a song like you would in any GarageBand for live loop or track projects. So, first I'm going to explain what a live loop is. You'll see in just a minute how different it is from the traditional tracks, which you just select by instrument, and each track has just a different linear time-based system. And then live loops, the main difference with the live loops is it allows you to simply create a song by combining different loops and timing elements and a small amount of effects, which I will explain later, to basically simply almost like DJ your own song without having to do a single musical note. So, Live Loops allows, has different genre presets, like they have house, R&B, dubstep, hip-hop, EMD, beat masher, electrofunk, rock, and you can create your own thing that'll be just like a blank project, And but I'm going to start with one of these presets to make our tutorial a lot quicker. Medium. Now, this is what the uh, live, this is what the interface will look like. And basically, these different squares are a different loop. So, each loop has their own time element, and they have different properties, which I will explain. So, first, let me explain the workspace a bit. Just like a normal track, you have the different track levels with the different instruments going are going a horizontal line so basically everything on that horizontal line is going to be that instrument and so these are various different things this is also just like it would be in the track mode where you have your volume controls and you can also listen to just one track or you can also um, you know mute a track if you want to just to listen to the others stuff like that and then also right here, you have the, it allows you to select the whole row, which is basically how you play a song, it's go by row by row, it is the typical way. And then just lets a whole song play through, it will continue looping unless you stop it, depending on how things are set out for you to loop. And you can just stop it by pressing it again, uh, whoops, sorry, actually you stop it by pressing the stop button up here and you restart it by pressing the fast backwards button and and then the top bar is pretty standard you know my songs all the typical stuff that would be in GarageBand and um, the loops but the new thing up here is also the effects and in the microphone which will allow you to record into your selected track or loop. Now the grid, the grid is a very interesting system. How basically, vertically, each is, is basically a section that you can select at one time very quickly, and horizontally it, it's an instrument. So each line is the same instrument, and each um, row is a it is a uh, section that you can select to play by pressing the bottom, and it will play through. And so, then, there's also each singular grid, which you can use to stop the stop and start the different loops. Depending on the different loop type, it, it does vary. But for the standard loop, you just you stop, start. So you can select different things across the grid. As long as they are not the same instrument, you can play multiple loops at different times from all across your grid. So you can just have a song going if you just want to just pick out some random loops and tracks that you just want to just play that if you're doing playing this live or whether you're recording it. And then now onto editing loops. Now this thing in the corner with the pencil and the grid that allows you to you can go into like an edit mode. 
And basically, now you can select each item. And there's many different things you can do. If you double tap, it will open the settings. And then if you just if you just hold it, if you hold, long press it, you will get this thing like the copy and paste you would on a normal mobile device. So you can basically cut if you want to move it to, you know, like move that track over there. Paste, same thing. Copy. It's you know, standard for most creative programs like Pages or Notes or any of those different programs allow cut, cut, copy, and paste usually. But then also there's a few thing, unique things like, um, like you can delete it. That's also another very standard thing for most iOS programs. And then record into cell. Now that basically allows you to edit each cell and you can record into it by using your voice or... Or you can record into an instrument, but that takes a different method. So to get back to the grid, you press this grid button up here, next to the My Songs button. Then I'll just flip back to the grid, and and go back in the editing mode, and and then right here is Edit. Now Edit allows you to basically open a mini view into the typical track mode where you can edit the length of the loop at least within the workplace the loop length will remain the same it just this part of the loop will only play basically when the loop loops it will it it will this will be a space it will just be silent there if you trim it like that but the loop length if you want to change the loop length you have to Press that button and change it to the bar. And then, and uh, you can also, if you make the workplace, if you make the the overall the cell larger by increasing the bars, you can also loop it. So, like you would in normal garage man, then you can loop it to make it lar longer. Now into settings. Now this is where you can really customize the song. You can customize the gain, which I would keep the same. Did something I wouldn't really mess with. Time snap, I wouldn't really mess with that either. Play mode's a little bit different though. Play mode basically, when you tap on a cell, it basically what you do when you tap on a cell. So for this cell, basically. You can tap on it on this cell to start it, and you can tap it again to stop it. Then if I change it, I can tap only while it's pressed. So I have to tap and hold to get it to make any to, to get the the loop to play. And re-trigger basically when I tap it again while it's playing, it will it will just it will just restart the loop. But I'm gonna keep it on that what it was. Then looping. If you notice some of these tracks, they aren't the circle. They're kind of they're straight. That's when they don't loop. They stop um, after they run their course. They will stop in your section and will not keep on looping. Then follow tempo and pitch. I would keep that just to make it easier. It just follows the the global tempo and pitch of the whole song and especially your section, the row, and then the length. How many the length is. Something I just would leave as is, just the bar length or how many the beat length and all that. And the semitones is where I find it really easy to get creative, which also you can press it to play it to hear what changes are being made. So semitones, you know, you can go higher up. You can change, you can also change the speed, which is very fun to change the speed. Really customize it here, but also another really good way to customize it is by reversing it. That completely reverses this is giving you a whole different sound, allowing for very good customization. And then, of course, if you like what you started with, press reset to reset it all. Now, let's move on to adding some loops. Now, adding the loops is pretty much the same as it would be when you add the loops to a typical GarageBand project, you just find the loops you want and drag them over. But first, I'm going to show you how to add new instruments if you have a completely different instrument. 
There's two ways to do that. If you want to add an instrument from the normal instrument view where you press this, you can choose between a loop or an instrument. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do the instrument. So let's see instruments. So then I can I'm just gonna show you real quick. I won't choose one of these. But if you really want to get creative with some customized stuff, you can choose keyboard, drums, even an amp, audio records, you know, the different instruments that are normally accessible to you when you start a normal GarageBand project. And even the new Smart Drummers and InterApp Audio, just different things that allow you to get really creative with it. And then also, the only way on an instrument, especially with the loop, you just take the loop and drag it into this empty this um, empty space down there and then you can play that and okay let me see actually don't think I like that and 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 then you can and then you've got the loop library which I may explain in another video more in depth about what you can do with it, but it's it's basically you can choose the instrument you want. So I want a synth. I choose the genre I want it in. Let's try an electro house, descriptors, just different things that the sound you want, whether you want distorted, which I don't know, maybe distorted would sound good. You can actually hear. It. I don't know. Maybe that sounds good. So we'll put it like right there. And so then you can also, you know, tap by playing on the loops and all that. And also just the individual volume of the loops. And then you can also add audio files and music from your music library, but I would be careful when adding music and even some audio files. Just make sure they're your own. Because if you're making this for, say, a business jingle or podcast, just be careful. I wouldn't, you know, want any copyright issues. I mean, I would only use an actual song with, um, if I'm just like doing it for just personal listening or party. But I would just suggest just you can get pretty creative with a large loop library that Apple has provided you with. And let's delete that for now. And now on to recording. Now, this, I'm sure there's different ways to do it, but I'm just going to show you basically just play it in order pretty much, which all the loops have made a full, once all the loops have, once the longest loop has made a full loop, just play it as how many times you want and record it. So, so we start with the record button, it should tick in, and it'll start automatically. So then I just wait till the longest loop is done, then I move on to the next se section, the next row. Like this. Just keep on, keep on going. The next part, and then it will kind of cue depending on how close you are to the end. Yeah, kind of missed the cue there. So it just waits till the closest section to do that. And we on the next part. Well, that's pretty much it. Okay. So that's pretty much how you work with Apple's new live loops in the new GarageBand. Thank you for watching.